Sorry about that. Um, what, wait one second, because we're not streaming yet. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Okay. All right. We are back. I apologize for that. I just allowed in the streaming computer. Whew. Okay. So I'm just going to listen for a while and then <laughs> I, well, um, if, if I keep asking questions, we'll never get through it. So let's, let's <laughs> see how far we get. If you'd like to share your screen again. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me do that here. share screen okay well i think you have to make me the host again apparently oh absolutely <laughs> sorry about that okay here you are okay okay so um yeah, I think it would be interesting to just look at some different chart comparisons so that we can get a more tangible grasp on what the implications of, of this really are. So, yeah, a lot of people have asked about Ross chart, like how it would be different with true sidereal. And uh, yeah, here it is. So on the left is his standard chart, uh, you know, the, the manifestor. And, you know, actually, um, you know, it's not all that different in uh, true sidereal. Um, he's still a manifester and uh, has the head center defined. And uh, the main, one of the main differences I see is, is this, he, he has the, he has ego manifested authority um, instead of. Uh, Just one minute. Um... Mm -hmm. Someone said there's no sound, but yeah, ego versus no sound. Uh, Just one second. Yeah, okay, it's still ego authority. Okay, I'll be right back. I have sound. <laughs> yeah. The mute. Okay, apologizing for the technical difficulties. I have a uh, sound tech looking at it. Okay, maybe. Cool. Okay, uh, let's get a little feedback. I'm just going to try it here now. Weird. I think it. I think it has sound. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but my sound tech is on it in any case. Okay. And I'm recording this. So regardless, this will be uploaded with sound. All right. Um, Great. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, like the chart, it looks kind of, it looks pretty similar actually. The main thing I notice is 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 he has the 4521 uh, channel in the uh, true sidereal. Um, and he didn't have that in the in the standard. Chart. Right, yeah, the channel yeah. of kind of the tribal uh, leader. Yeah, and he actually has the incarnation cross of rulership in the true serial as well. Hmm. Uh, and his, his main sun gate is the 22.2. Um, right, I know those so well. I had a <laughs> um, long term relationship with the 22 too. I know it very well. well. That's so funny. That's so funny because at the time I was, you know, thinking of all this. My girlfriend like actually had the like exact same birthday as Ra. I didn't really realize it at the time, but you know she, you know, which was I thought was the Clarion, um, you know, the Clarion. Mm -hmm. um, but at least I will tell you, for her, it makes so much more sense for it to be really shit, man, because she is very controlling. But anyways, <laughs> mm. uh, a little joke there. Um, so, but yeah, that's funny that, that you also had. 
are familiar with that. Uh, well, yeah, Charm <laughs> School. I mean, it's a very political, uh, gracious sort of. Uh, they know how to talk and they know how to. Well, they know how to listen, really. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the main difference. Uh, yeah, and so and triple triple split and um, no more channel of structuring, no more channel of awakening, no more channel of initiation. Let's see, what are the other changes? No more left angle. Um, we now have a. Uh, is it a? It, it's the right angle. Two four. Um, two four. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of switched there for now. Um, no, so no, no. I, I got four. it. I'm following. Yeah instead of a five one yeah yeah so yeah now now the two four um still gate 40 still gate 26 still undefined solar plexus root sacral um yeah but now with a with a defined head so that's also new the 64 47 uh defined head and also it kind of changes the circuitry so besides being Triple split is is it triple split? Yeah, it looks like it, right? In, uh, yes. Okay, triple split. So yeah, triple split, and then also kind of a change of circuitry. Now a tribal being, because Ra had no tribal and kind of went out of his way to talk about what a integration survival freak he was and the individual melancholy. And in fact, here he's not. He actually has no individual circuitry. He only has integration, tribal, and collective. So if if this is true or if it were true he would be completely irrevocably off base about his individuality that he spoke extensively about yeah well i mean his personality like son would still gates. be individual uh, right? yeah he has like five six seven gates no but the gates aren't considered part of the life force yeah. energy so someone's yeah, no channels. but someone's considered pure individual yeah it's just the channels so because gates can be kind of dormant or gates can be not self. It's really the channels that are considered the aura and the life force energy. So here he has a very tribal aura and a collective abstract aura with a little bit of unconscious integration. So I'm just pointing it out. I'm not, not making any comments on the veracity of it. It's just kind of a very different version. And then is, is variable something that's been calculated because he made such a big deal about how left he was and how much um, of his own observation of left variable. So, it would just be quite yeah. funny if he, uh, so let's system. see here. Uh, so I actually have all the colors and tones here. So, uh, according oh, to this, and it puts him as valleys actually, which is interesting because he thought he was shores. And so he made a lot of you know, claims that he would get sick when he was away from the ocean and things like that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and here right. with his, oh, his dietary regimen is also different. So instead of being a calm eater, he would be a thirst. Um, so, so just real quick then, how do you reconcile? I mean, are you literally saying Ra was mistaken about 100% of his placements? No, I'm not saying he's mistaken. I'm not saying anyone's mistaken about anything when like they're looking at their chart or whatever. I'm just suggesting that perhaps they they never really understood it to begin with, maybe, um, or were like maybe had um, the wrong conceptions about who they were. Maybe they didn't really. So know I don't really understand how that's different than saying mistaken, though, because if you're saying that they don't really understand who they are or they have misconceptions, I mean, maybe maybe we do agree that you're saying they're mistaken. It's just the, the word that I'm using. You're not really saying the word mistaken. You're just well, saying yeah. confused or they don't really know. Because um, when you say someone's mistaken, it's implying that they're wrong, you know, and that, and, and I mean, it just comes off bad, right? Like, I mean, because they're not- I mean, does it? I don't know. I mean, I tell people they're wrong all the time. I, I just mean, I, I guess what I'm asking is, are you saying that Ra's, chart as he knew it was still completely accurate and that the true sidereal chart is a different layer oh, that, on top of that yes, that is or are you saying that the aura type actually changes the strategy actually changes the authority changes the dietary regimen changes and on and on and on yeah so it, yeah it's good you brought this up because that is a very profound point that uh, i thought about so yeah so i kind of view it as the tropical i thought i, I think that Okay, here's what I really think, like, depending on what astrology we're using, 
it can actually kind of change the global consciousness field um, that people are living in, depending on which, uh, you know, astrology they are using or have been exposed to consciously or unconsciously. So, so this is kind of a theory, a new theory that depending on your, for lack of a better term, evolution or, you know, consciousness level or something like that, um, one of these is going to be accurate for you and one's going to be inaccurate, or one of them is going to appear accurate for you, but be inaccurate until you're able to achieve the development or evolution of consciousness to see that the other is accurate. Yeah, well, I'm not necessarily implying that there's evolution taking place, that one is better than the other. Um, it's just that uh, one is, I suppose, more constructed by other people, by society, and one is more constructed by the universe, like to you individually. Um, I don't so really follow. You're saying because the tropical zodiac is constructed by society? That doesn't, well, I mean, that doesn't really ring true for me. I mean, the tropical zodiac is a reference to a position along the annual cycle. The annual cycle is certainly natural. The annual cycle is certainly not constructed by society. Is that, the names that we call them are. Well, what I'm saying is that astrology has been used since its inception as a, uh, as a means to help control or rule society, um, you know, by the people at the top. Um, you know, the astrologers used to be, you know, the people in charge of everything, uh, you know, back in the Babylonian days and all that. Um, so that's kind of what I'm and, and it's it's kind of like it produces the unconscious effects in people that uh, that if you accept, then it like kind of becomes like true for you. Like if astrology says you are this type of person. Okay, and you accept that, then you will be that type of person, you know. Um, well, you're talking about the kind of limiting beliefs that can happen when you tell somebody that this is what they are. Yes. Okay, yes. so how is true sidereal different? Because I believe that true sidereal better represents how the universe actually programs you as opposed to this kind of more constructed programming that is being told to you, you know, um, and thus better kind of represents your true self in a way. But that, that statement is kind of meaningless to me. I mean, I, I might not, I mean, saying that it's, it's like saying the reason something's true is because it's true. Saying the reason something's real is because it exists in nature. I mean, these are tautologies. It's saying, you're literally just telling me that, that the other versions are constructed, but this isn't. I mean, I don't understand, I don't follow. Well, because it's because it follows how the planets actually appear in the sky, which is something tropical astrology doesn't. You do. mean against the constellations, not how the planets appear I in the mean, sky I relative to the annual that. cycle. <laughs> now, the constellations have no more grasp. Of, I mean, they have no more claim on being natural than the annual cycle. I mean, the annual cycle is absolutely yeah. natural. We didn't create the year. We didn't create the vernal equinox. Right. Um, How could that be constructed and yet artificially demarcating a position of a constellation? I mean, to me, it's much more constructed to say where a constellation begins and ends because a constellation is 100% constructed. It's constructed by a human being. The actual natural thing is the star behind it, which is why I was asking you. I mean, look, there's a way that your model makes sense. It makes sense if Aldebaran didn't move through gate 16, but Aldebaran is actually the quality of a particular gate that is always that gate, you know, and if the gate represents a slice of a neutrino backdrop, then it makes perfect sense. I don't believe that's what a gate is. Ra never said that's what a gate is. Ra said that the gate was part of the personality crystal um, sheath around planet Earth and is very much part of a natural cycle. It's part of the annual cycle. Doesn't get much more natural than that. I mean, I didn't get to choose when spring equinox happened. I don't get to choose when the summer solstice happens. Yeah. Um, Response? Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't necessarily think that that follows uh, the whole reasoning about, you know, Aldebaran being fixed stars being gates. Uh, I don't think all that necessarily follows. Um, 
you know, from- I mean, that's the only way I can make any sense of it. Is there an alternative way to make sense of it? Well, yes. I mean, I think, I don't think it has to be that complicated, um, you know, uh, and we can say that we can go with the idea that neutrinos traveling virtually the same speed as light with light, they're a type of light, right? Um, are what programs us, and thus we should represent the, the light where it's actually coming from. And that's that's all as far as we need to go with it. Like we don't need to- When you say where it's actually argument. coming from, the tropical zodiac knows, you can use the tropical zodiac to pinpoint a location in the sky. I mean, there's no difference in knowing where something is. There are two different systems of addressing. I mean, they're literally, two different ways of referencing the same point in space and you have to translate from one system to the other. And the only difference is that the sidereal system is constantly changing. So if I translate to true sidereal now, it's 31 degrees. If I translate to true sidereal in 72 years, it's 32 degrees. If I translated 72 years ago, it was 30 degrees. But the translation from one system to the other, it's not that people are actually wrong about where the planets are in the sky. The planets are in the same place in the sky. We established this right from the beginning. Yeah. The yeah. transits and the aspects and everything's the same. What's changing is how we are referring to it. And then it's also what's changing is how we understand what is a gate. And if gate 25 can happen on any day of the year, that means that the gate 25 is actually nothing to do with the annual cycle. Gate 25 is actually a slice of the neutrino backdrop so to speak, a slice of the orb at the outermost edge of the universe. But if gate 25 is fixed to the, sp the spring equinox every year, then instead different things move through gate 25. So we're either, we're back to this, the question of, you know, is gate 25 changing or is gate 25 the same? Basically, what is it? And so what is a gate to you? Oh, if you think of it like this, gate 25 being fixed to the spring, the position on the earth that the spring equinox was in, like according to tropical astrology, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fixed to the actual season, the actual spring equinox, you know? There's, there's no, 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 it, it does. It does. This is a crucial point. It absolutely yes, does. The, the tropical uh, yeah. zodiac says that if you say the sun is in gate 25, line two, or zero degrees Aries in the tropical zodiac, which is equivalent, right? 25, two, or zero degrees Aries, same location. Then that means every year you can take your telescope or you can take your neutrino detector and you can point it at the same position relative to the earth and it will always be there. It's not changing. You're trying to say that it's in different places every year. It's not. It's the same place relative to us. What's different is what's behind the sun. Well, I'm not. I'm saying it, they're not behind the sun. You're saying that. <laughs> no, no. But what I'm I telling you is that. The, oh, you're saying the constellations are in front of the sun. The constellations are between the sun and the earth. The gate, I want to clarify. Oh, I thought you were, the gates. The gates. Like, no, I was talking about the constellations. I was talking about the constellations. They are obviously in deep space, far past the sun, in a straight line. If you were to point to the sun, you could just keep that straight line going and there's going to be a star behind it somewhere. You know, it, we're in a dense field of stars. Yes. Okay, well, let's finish up. I do love this chart of Ra. I do find it absolutely delightful that it is the same in, in certain ways, despite being very different. I would love to go through my chart. And if you want to show your chart as well, yeah, then I think we should open up to Q&A. A quick, quick, quick look at your chart, and um, I mean, you can tell me if this is right or not. I, uh, I put in your birth date so you can verify. Yeah. Yep, Malden Mass 2048. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Um, and so this would be your chart according to the two true sidereal. Um, so you'd be a manifesting generator, uh, and you would have the cross of the sleeping phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, a one three investigator martyr um yeah and the only emotional generator channel the only true emotional generator the 59 six yeah uh yeah you'd be a 59 as your as your main uh mm -hmm. and the verbal creativity i mean i love that center column there's a whole lot of taurus in this chart i'll tell you and i am a very <laughs> taurian being so it appeals to me at a 
at a visceral level. I mean, uh, the 214 has got to be one of my favorites. Um, yeah, the 8 yeah. one, you know, obviously, who doesn't love that? I had a <laughs> girlfriend who was a stand up comedian with the 8 one, and, you know, she was, she had witty banter for days. And then 4323, I mean, Ooh, good company. You got a uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Dennis Rodman. Now, of course, the thing is, when I reference people who have this kind of iconic freaks and geniuses, very few of them are likely to still have it in true sidereal. Unless you're finding this sort of synchronicity that for some magical reason, you're finding a lot of coincidences of, of similarities, which would not surprise me because in any sufficiently complex system, you know, it almost becomes like a divinatory tool. I mean, in a funny way, I almost think true sidereal may have more value as a tool of divination than as a map of your true self. Um, but we can, you know, explore that at a later date. Um, yeah, so it's it really, and it's still single definition. So there are some commonalities. Uh, yeah, the emotional center, sensitivity to touch. And then for dietary regimen, I see daylight. For environment, I see caves. Yes. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. So pretty different, pretty significantly different. I would say this is, this is more of a different chart than Roz. Even though Roz was highly different in a number of ways, this one seems even more kind of out there. Although still sacrally defined, of course, statistically speaking, 70% of charts will be sacrally defined. So then, you know, it'd be an interesting question if, uh, if you start generating fake true sidereal charts for people, if you get the same, you know, coincidental, oh, this is me kind of attitude it would be an interesting uh, test, sort of a double blind test, or to give somebody two charts and see if they choose which is their yeah, true sidereal. I mean, that, that's well. actually... Yeah, that's actually a good idea and something that might, uh, yeah, might do that. Very cool. <laughs> do you have any comments on this chart? Is there anything particular about this chart um, that you think stands out to you as being particularly relevant to what you know of me? Yes. Yeah, so um, I thought that, uh, I'll actually, I thought of, I thought at first that it was, it was quite similar to my true serial chart and some of the channels it has. Like I also had the 14.2 and the 34.20 in the true sidereal that I didn't have, you know, uh, mm. normally. Um, so yeah, that kind of stood out to me. And uh, yeah, and and we do we do tend to uh, have uh, you know that kind of forceful um, uh, personality about our own opinions, you know. So um, uh, and yeah. I'll, I mean, you seem like a pretty busy person, so the manifesting generator makes sense to me. But like I said, I don't want, I'm, yeah, I don't really know you well enough to comment much on. <laughs> well, it is um, funny. Um, I do have 34.3. I mean, some of the placements are coincidentally the same. So it's kind of one of those, you know, um, stopped clock is still right twice a day. And it's, you know, it's, it's going to be, um, interesting, you know, to me, the yardstick of validity of something is not, is not really based on how much the person associates with it or identifies with it simply because there could even be cases like this where you end up with the same placements. So you kind of, to me, it, it, you know, it has to go a little bit farther than that and I have to understand the mechanism behind it. But, um, but yeah, I, I do appreciate you doing this and I would absolutely uh, be open to discussing that. And, and here's your chart yeah, now. And okay, wonderful. Chart, finally. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, this one doesn't have, you know, what the planets, but I can, so in, in this chart, I was a triple split manifester uh, with a lot of like, you know, like energy, like I had the head and heart center defined, which is pretty rare, I think, um, you know, and channel initiation, jack of all trades and uh, awareness. Um, mm -hmm. So, and yeah. yeah, of course, there were a lot of things about this chart that, you know, I thought described me well when I first encountered human design. And part of the reason that I got so into it, you know, because, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this is this really is a lot like me. You know, it really does kind of tell me who I am or mm -hmm. supposed to be or whatever. Okay, but then, um, so here's my other, my Teresa Real chart. 
So in this chart, my son is actually the 45. Uh, so I'm a, uh, so in this chart, I'm a three, five. In this chart, I'm a five, two. Um, it's interesting because I always thought the five, two resonated with me the most. Um, and I was like, uh, well, and I thought, well, okay, well, I'm still a five unconsciously. So, you know, maybe it's just that, but I very consciously feel the five, uh, in me. and and now the innocence unless you were innocence before but all five twos are innocence and single ingredient so five twos notoriously have the most strict and the, the largest impact on their digestive system from eating so i think a very simple way to verify if you're a five two or not would be if you your digestive system can handle multiple ingredients well, it, it's actually interesting you said that because my my uh my determination is the um you know appetite consecutive the most basic one right no that's what i'm saying all five right. twos all five twos have that there are no transitional profiles oh. that don't have appetite. okay okay that's it's either that's consecutive or alternating so i guess that's what i was saying is that that would be an interesting confirmation to follow the dietary regimen along with the innocence that if you're a five two the innocence is really um all about Hmm. Issuing goals and issuing, you know, refusing to be the leader. It's the opposite of the leader. So it's not putting yourself in any sort of leadership position or any sort of direction. It's kind of refusing to give direction to others, refusing to get involved and so on. And now I'm not going to say that that's strong evidence either way of a five, two or a chart. I'm just kind of giving you a couple of signposts to look for. Cool. The innocent yeah. is the, uh, but you know, Obviously, most innocent people I meet are in their transference, just like most <laughs> desire people are in their transference. So it's not, you know, I'm not, not saying one way or the other. I'm a desire person, so I know innocence very well. I spent the first 30 years of my life in innocence saying, don't bother me, leave me out of it. I'm not going to get involved. Somebody else will take care of it and so on. And it's only been recently that I've been able to kind of step into the leadership position that is uh, the sort of genetic imperative of the third color. So, yeah, so very fascinating. So you, you do have some similarities, but a lot of differences too, and a very different, different strategy, different authority, different aura type, different, um, different circuitry. Yeah. And, and another thing that I've noticed about these charts is that, uh, you know, something that at first appears to be very different, actually, it's, it kind of has a, the same underlying theme in a way, but, but brought about in a different way. For example, uh, in my old chart here, I have the 62 sun gate, which is all about details, um, you know, uh, you know, words, logic, whatever. Um, and expressing that, you know, whereas in, in my new chart, I have the format energy, the logical format energy, the 952, which in a way fulfills kind of the same function on some level. Uh, well, think, yeah, nine and 62 are the two they're the two detailed gates and they're the yeah. two yeah they and they're also both um keys to the current global cycle according to the global cycles material so and what's funny is i predicted you'd have 61 before i knew you because i said <laughs> this guy nobody can create a whole system like this without gate 61 you know ra had gate 61 and in his as well and 61 is really the the most esoteric and occult and uh and then just as a side note, while we're on this, because we might not get a chance later, um, Ra actually specifically talked about people who had 61.2 and 61.3, very specifically in the global cycles material, because he said that he himself, Ra had 61.1, which is the key from 1960 to 2027, based on the procession of the equinoxes, based on the movement of uh, the two wheels against each other. And that's using a basically Fagan Bradley. But in any case, according to that system, uh, in 1960, gate, gate 61, line one, became the sort of prominent theme of the lifting of the veil of, um, you know, occult knowledge and so on. But if you go back for the 80 years before that, it was two, it was line two, because it's a precession, it's going backwards. And if you go back 80 years before that, roughly, it's line three. And so what Ross said about people with the 61 three is that they would be right at home in the 1800s at the, the peak of the theosophical interest in merging together various systems 
of uh, astrology and tarot and well, various well, things. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty spot on when he literally calls out the 613. That being said, you don't have this in, in your other chart, but you still have gate 24. So it's kind of interesting. You know, are you a, are you a gate 61 person who innately used your gate 61 or are you a gate 24 who was effectively conditioned by a gate 61, right? It's kind of the, 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 <laughs> the two alternatives here. Yeah, and I don't know if you had a chance to read the 61.3, but it talked about the trial and error process of coming to truth and that the exaltation was cooperating with others to discover the truth together uh, versus the detriment was sort of standing in opposition to others and meeting resistance. So I don't know if you noticed that was kind of a cute, a cute little wink there. And I feel like we're cooperating a lot. I feel like this is a wonderful collaboration. So I just want to say right off the bat, regardless of any of the placements, I do think we kind of went from a competitive to a cooperative mode, and I, I appreciate that. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've, I've, again, yeah, I've studied, of course, all my, you know, gates um, that I had, that I have had, whatever, originally very, very much. So, yeah, the inter interdependence one. Honestly, it always, it, it felt kind of, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, it felt like it was going to be hard for me to like for that to like be my gate there because I I don't naturally you know go towards the um, or seek out other people necessarily to collaborate with uh, or to well the detriment is refusing to collaborate and just telling them they're wrong right so it goes either way it's either collaborating and working together or saying this is right and that's wrong and that's why it was very interesting to me earlier where you were saying. No, it's not that conventional human design is wrong. It's just different. And I think we're trying to figure out what some of these differences are. Yeah, and about that uh, point. So basically the way I think of it is that the, the standard human design charts, the tropical charts, um, the way I think of it or have come to think of it is like kind of like who you are in like the matrix quote unquote of reality, you know? <laughs> um, Whereas, you know, maybe the true serial chart is some kind of escape from the matrix or if there were no matrix, right? Um, who you would be. I mean, to me, that sounds kind of like a metaphor for the not self versus the self, because I can kind of point to a chart like in your, you know, in your original chart, I could point to that, you know, undefined spleen. And I could say that is your matrix self. Your matrix self is holding on to things that, you know, and so on. And, or, or actually, because you have so many channels pointing at the spleen that it would be the other way around. It would be, uh, you know, that you feel that you're not good enough at holding on to things. And if only you were able to hold on to things more and persevere, then it would be different and so on. And that's really the matrix. I mean, the not self is the matrix breaking free of the matrix is living your design it's you know following your true strategy and authority and really yep. being yourself so i mean quote, self is actually my not self you know what if it's actually well safe? and it's going to be interesting right it's going to be interesting to see how if ignoring the emotions and kind of saying that's not me and i'm only going to trust my sacral and kind of what that that does for you and how that changes your life i mean it's a beautiful experiment it's it's kind of like generators get to live as a projector for a day or so on. I, I, I recommend it. I mean, I, I've heard about this experiment before um, where people kind of try to live as another type um, or, you know, a generator intentionally trying to start up a conversation with everyone they meet and kind of seeing how it goes, stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it's definitely interesting stuff. Um, so, okay, well, are, how do you feel about some questions? Should we open up for a few yeah. questions? Okay. Let's take a look now. I want to just thank you again for um, for everything today. So let's okay. So let's um, let's look at the live chat questions we have now. Um, By the way, there's only six minutes in the meeting again. So should we just take a ten minute break and restart for questions? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We can. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop the meeting now. We're going to be back on. The YouTube is going to stay on streaming. So everybody that's still on, grab a glass of water. You know, um, yeah, get, get a little fresh air. I'm going to shake my shoulders a little bit. And I'm going to end this meeting now, send you another link on Facebook, and we will reconvene in 10 minutes.
All right. Thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. All right. All right. Easy.